All right, guys. Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome. Happy Friday. Hope everybody's doing well. Um, all right, let's jump right into this. Today's video lecture is on parallel circuits. So, last class we looked at series circuits, okay? And you have all this in the PowerPoint. Um, but a series circuit is one big loop, okay? You have a battery, you have wire coming out of that battery, and that wire goes through every single resistor, or in this case, light bulb, uh, before it makes its way back to the battery. One big loop, okay? Today, we're looking at parallel circuits. A parallel circuit is more than one loop. So what does that look like? Well, if you look at the first example on the PowerPoint, uh, you probably can't see it, but it's right here. Um, what you see is we have two 9-volt batteries and we have three 4-ohm resistors. But if you look at them, when the wire comes out of the battery, okay, it splits before it gets to each resistor, right? So when the wire splits, one wire goes through the resistor, the other wire goes to the next resistor, okay? Each of these splits makes it so that every resistor or every light bulb is in its own individual loop, okay? Well, this seems complicated. Why would we do this? We do this because if one of these light bulbs dies, let's say this one craps out right here, okay? These two resistors are still working because they're still in a completed loop. In a series circuit, if one light bulb dies, the whole circuit dies, right? Because cutting off that one light bulb is like taking a pair of scissors to the whole circuit, okay? So yes, parallel circuits are more complicated. Yes, they're more expensive to make, but because we have parallel circuits, is the reason why when a light bulb goes out in your kitchen, okay, your TV doesn't turn off, all right? This is how we wire uh, our homes, our buildings, things like that. Okay, so what do we need to know about parallel circuits? Okay, number one, we know that they're more than one loop. Each resistor has its own individual loop. Two, we know that the voltage is the same everywhere in this circuit because each resistor is in its own loop they all get the total voltage, okay? But because they break off, the current now drops over every resistor. Hopefully you're sitting there thinking, that's the opposite of series circuits, and you would be right, okay? So in a series circuit, the voltage um, drops over every resistor and the current's the same everywhere, okay? In a parallel circuit, the voltage is now the same everywhere and the current drops over every resistor. Did I say that right? One more time. In a series circuit, the current's the same everywhere. In a parallel circuit, the voltage is same everywhere. And I'm gonna say this a few times, but my little trick for remembering this is, like I told you, a parallel circuit is more than one loop, right? Which means, look right here, it splits it V's, huh? right? Pretty good. V is the same everywhere in a parallel circuit. In a series circuit, there is only one loop. And look at that, that's an I for one big loop, okay? So again, parallel, voltage is the same everywhere because they split. In a series circuit, there's only one, so the current is the same everywhere because an I looks like a one. All right, the last thing and probably the trickiest part about parallel circuits is how we add up the resistance, okay? In a parallel circuit, it's not just adding up the resistors. We add up what is called the reciprocal of the resistor. I've used this word before, if you don't remember it, a reciprocal is when you go one divided by a number. So instead of just adding up resistor one plus resistor two plus resistor three, we add up one divided by resistor one plus one divided by resistor two plus one divided by resistor three. Um, let's go through this math, because if you've seen this before, it's not too tricky, but I wanna make sure we got this. Okay, so here we have three four ohm resistors, 1 divided by 4 plus 1 divided by 4 plus 1 divided by 4 gives me 0 0.75. So that means 1 divided by the total resistance is 0 0.75. So in order to get this resistance by itself, that's why I circled it, I have to do the opposite. This is division. So I multiply both sides by RT. Okay. All right. These cancel out. All right. And now I bring this down. I have 1 is equal to 0 0.75 times RT. Okay. Hopefully you see these moves before I'm doing them. That means this is multiplication. So I got to divide both sides by 0 0.75. 
and these cancel out, 0 0.75 divided by 0 0.75 is 1, and I have 1 divided by 0 0.75, which gives me a total resistance of 1.33. All right, okay, so that's the first step. We're going to do a couple of these so you see them. Uh, again, that one is in the PowerPoint. Um, the question is, what happens if we add another resistor? So let's keep our original three 4 ohm resistors and let's add one more. Okay, let's do this. Let's say our total resistance is now going to be four 4 ohm resistors. Okay, so that looks like this. Again, you can use your calculator to add all these up, but if you've ever known one fourth is also known as a quarter, if I have one, two, three, four quarters, put that in your calculator and you will very quickly see that that equals one. Okay? Um, so now I'm going to do the same thing. I need to get this RT out of the bottom of this fraction. So I multiply both sides by RT. And again, RT just means the total resistance. All right? RT divided by RT is one. I bring this down. One equals one times RT. Okay? I want to get R by itself, so I have to do the opposite multiplication, which is division. So I divide both sides by one. One divided by one is one. And one divided by one is, oh, you guessed it. One ohm. Okay? This is an ohm, by the way. Sorry about my poor drawing. Um, okay, so what did we just see? When we had three resistors that were four ohms, we had a total resistance of 1.33. We added another resistor, okay? And what happened to the total resistance? It went down. That's another weird thing about parallel resistance. The more resistors you have, the less total resistance there is. It's kind of wacky, right? That's the opposite. In a series circuit, right? Remember, they just add up. The more resistors you add, the more resistance you have. And this is why it's very important to know if something is wired in series or parallel. If it's in parallel, the more resistors you add, you're actually decreasing the total resistance, okay? You're increasing the total current. You're making them go faster, which we'll get to in a little bit. Anyway, let's look at some examples. Okay, so I'm, you probably can't see this, but you have an example in the PowerPoint that looks like this. I'm gonna draw it a little differently just to make it easier. But we have a battery that is 2.4 volts and we have three resistors. One, two, three. And again, this will be much smoother when I have my whiteboard. And those three resistors are three ohms, three ohms, and six ohms. All right, so here we go, 2.4 volt, battery, two 3 ohm resistors, and a 6 ohm resistor, and everything's in its own loop so we know that it's parallel, all right? I know that solving those resistance problems is kind of tricky, but once again, coming to the rescue is our friend, the VIR chart. So we're going to do the same thing, VIR, just like before, and write down how many resistors you have. So we have R1, R2, R3 and R total, okay? Boom, 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 ooh. My lines are actually all right today. Okay, um, so now we fill in what we know. Well, we've seen this before. We know the battery is 2.4 volts, so that means our total voltage is 2.4 volts. And I know my three resistors are three ohms, three ohms, and six ohms, right? Okay, so before we would just add these up if this was in series and it'd be really easy to find the total resistance. Here, it's a little trickier. Um, you might be like, oh, I gotta do this resistance thing. Well, here's why the VIR chart is awesome. If you remember, we said that because parallel circuits split, right? The line split right there. The voltage is the same everywhere in the circuit, which means I know that the voltage is 2.4 volts everywhere, right? Aha! And now the chart allows us to do this. If I know two numbers in a row, I can find the third, all right? So I know that V equals I 
times r, right? So that means in order to find my current here, I know that 2.4 equals i times 3. So if I want i by itself, i divide both sides by 3, right? Division is the opposite of multiplication. 3 divided by 3 is 1, and this gives me a current. So I'll put a little cap on that so you can see that that's an i, not a 1. Current equals 2.4 divided by 3, which is 0 0.8 amps. And again, go, go to Google. I don't know if you can see this. There's a calculator right there on Google. Literally just Google the word calculator. There's a calculator on your phone, all right? And it can do all of this stuff. So now I know my current is 0 0.8 amps, all right? Well, I can figure out the other two, right? So look here, this one's three ohms, which means it's the same. And I do the same thing with the last one, uh, 2.4 divided by six gives me 0 0.4, all right? Almost done, we've got two more boxes left here at the bottom. So we know that because it splits, because it's a parallel circuit, the voltage is the same everywhere, and the current just adds up, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add up my three currents. So 0 0.8 plus 0.8 plus 0 0.4 equals two, all right? And now, in order to find the total resistance, instead of doing all of that messy reciprocal work, I can use the VIR chart to do it for me because now I know that 2.4 equals 2 times the total resistance. This is multiplication, so all I got to do to find the total resistance, you guessed it, the opposite, I divide. Why did I divide by R? That's not the right thing to do. I'm going to divide by 2. I got a little ahead of myself. 2 divided by 2 is 1, and 2.4 divided by 2 is 1.2 ohms. And there you have it, okay? Full VIR chart, whatever they ask you. What's the current at the second resistor? 0 0.08. What's the voltage at the third resistor? 2.4. What's the total resistance? 1.2. Now, if you wanna check this, all you gotta do is go back and go one divided by three plus one divided by three plus one divided by six, add that up, Okay, and then one divided by that number gives you 1.2. That sounds kind of complicated. You've seen a couple problems. I know you can handle it, but this is much easier okay, if you go this way. All right, let's do one more together. Uh, PowerPoint. All right, uh, and next one. Okay, so we have a battery. Uh, we don't know how many volts are in it, but we do know that we have five amps of current coming out of that battery and splitting off into two resistors. One of them is 40 ohms. The other is 50 ohms. Okay, again, not the best way to complete that circuit. All right. We have a battery, I don't know what the voltage is, but I do know that coming straight out of the battery, we have five amps of current, and I have a 40 ohm resistor and a 50 ohm resistor. I apologize for the bad handwriting. So again, V, I, R. Here, I only have two resistors, so all I got is an R1, an R2, and a total. Ooh, lines, eh, not so good the second time. We're actually much worse, but that's okay. Okay, so let's fill in what we know. We know, coming straight out of the battery, I have five amps of current, which means that is my total current. So my total current is five amps. And then I know the resistors are 40 ohms and 50 ohms. Now, here in this problem, unfortunately, we don't know the voltage. We only know the total current, and the current is not the same everywhere. The current adds up, which means that we're going to have to figure out our total resistance. But that's okay. It gives us another chance to go over this. So, again, uh, 
the t 1 divided by the total resistance equals 1 divided by the first resistor, which is 40, plus 1 divided by the second resistor, which is 50. I go like this back to Google's. Okay, I type that in, parentheses, 1 divided by 40, close parentheses, plus parentheses, 1 divided by 50, close parentheses, enter. That gives me 0 0.045, all right? So I know that 1 divided by RT equals 0 0.045, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by RT, Right, get that out of the bottom, okay? Now I have one divided by 0 0.045 times RT. Put that down there so you can see it. And again, to get the RT by itself, I have to divide both sides by 0 0.045. Okay, 0 0.045 divided by itself is one. Anything divided by itself is one. So I know that my total resistance is equal to 1 divided by that number, 0 0.045, which in this case, 1 divided by 0 0.045 equals an RT of 2, excuse me, 22, 0.22. All right, very nice. Okay, if you noticed here, one of the ways that I like to think about it and the way that I add this up since I've been doing this a while, is once you go and find this number, when you go one divided by the first resistor plus one divided by the second resistor, when you have this number, what you're really doing is you're just taking this number and going one divided by that. That's your total resistance, okay? So if that's helpful, if it's not, and you don't get what I'm saying, follow the math, okay? The math will set you free, but if you can remember that, once you go one divided by your resistors, you just go one divided by that number, that's your total resistor, okay? All right, but now, now we have two numbers in a row, which means all we gotta do is V, sorry, this sideways drawing is not very good, V equals I times R. So to find the total voltage, I just multiply five by 22. So I go times five, and that gives me a total voltage of 111.1. Bam. Now, I know that my voltage is the same everywhere. So I know that all my voltages are 111.1 volts, volts, volts. All right? Let me see how I did that. Voltage is the same, right? See that split right there? Boom, boom. Okay, more than one path. Okay, parallel is the same everywhere. One path, current is the same everywhere. Okay. All right. So now I have two numbers in both rows. So I can solve for this very easily. For this first one, I'm trying to find my current. So I know that 111.1 equals the current times R. And I know I put a little cap on it here and not there. Sorry for the inconsistency. I just like it that it looks like a one up here and I don't want it to look like a one down there. But uh, this is easy. Oh, I know my R. All right, so this is multiplication. So all I have to do is divide both sides by 40. 40 divided by 40 is one, and I equals 111 divided by 40, which is 2.78, I round up, and this is amps, okay? I do the same thing for the second one, except instead of 40, it's gonna be 50, so this gives me 111. 0.1 divided by 50 equals 2.22 amps, and voila! Completed VIR chart, everything you need to know about the circuit. Um, if you go through it, you can always double check everything. Again, in a parallel circuit, your voltage is the same everywhere. Your currents add up, and sure enough, 2.78 plus 2.22 equals five, so check. And then we already added these up right here, okay? You can do the reciprocal math, put it back into that equation, double check. And then you just go across each row, okay? 40 times 2.78 is 111.1. 50 times 2.2 is 111.1. And 22.22 times 5 is 111.1. Okay, 
All right, so that is the content. Using this, you will be able to answer all questions on your DOL for today. Um, I've been looking at all the questions you guys have been putting in the comments and on your attendance form, so I just want to go over a few of these things. Um, one, a lot of you guys are asking um, when we're going to go back to school. Um, the honest to God answer to that question is I have no idea. Um, I don't know. I don't think anybody knows. So um, stay home, stay safe, stay healthy, okay? Um, and again, if you have questions about this stuff, please keep them coming. I really appreciate it. I'll answer them as soon as I see them. Um, other questions. Somebody asked if they could see my dog in the video. Uh, the dogs are... I'm not really sure where they're at right now, but hopefully in upcoming days they'll be bustling into the room. Um, somebody asked, oh, I should have written these down, shouldn't I? Um, okay, as far as how the Google site works, okay, if you're watching this video, you've probably figured it out. But every day I will make a post, and in that post there's an attendance form. Just fill out the attendance form. You can put any questions that you have for me there, and I'll try to answer them in these videos. Um, there's also going to be um, a link, so if you go to the classwork section, that is where all the makeup uh, quizzes codes are. Um, somebody asked me when I'm going to be putting in those grades, that was a question. I'll be putting in those grades this weekend, and then I'll be putting up another set of makeup quizzes work codes. I just want to make sure I don't miss anybody. Um, you will also find for each section, I have the PowerPoint up there. I've tried to go back through and annotate the PowerPoint so they have as much information as I can put in them. Um, and then there's going to be today's. So if you are in first, second, or fourth period, double check the quizzes codes. It'll be on there. And again, if you have any questions, slow down the video, rewatch the video, um, take down these notes, write down the notes, and work out the problems on your own. I know you guys are going to be great. All right. So until next time, if you have any questions, uh, email me. It's rnorris at dallasisd.org or just hit me up on the Google Classroom. All right, guys, have a great day and a good weekend.